One of the greatest enemies of your ministry will be yourself. We have to battle the flesh if we are going to be used and anointed of God. And today on this edition of Spirit Church, I'm talking about the first disciples. And as we look over how the first disciples were called and what they did to follow Jesus, we will learn from their lives truths that will help us to pursue the call of God in our own. I'm continuing and actually finishing now my series, God's Anointed. And this lesson is really going to challenge you. It's going to get into the depths of your heart. It's going to get into the depths of who you are. And it's going to challenge you to crucify the flesh, to be done with ambition, to be done with self. And when you overcome the flesh, when you fully surrender to the Holy Spirit, that's where the real power is. Talking about that and more on this edition of Spirit Church. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. I know, I know, I know that this will challenge you. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. And let me be to you a sacrifice. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of love, come down. And as you show your face, we will see your glory here. We will see your glory here. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. And Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Oh, let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of love come down. And as you show your face, we will see your glory here. 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 You know, these days you don't really hear messages on surrender all that often. And I'll never forget one of the most powerful things I ever heard. It was one of those things that really impacted my life. You know, as you go along in your journey, as you follow Christ, there are things that will mark your life at certain points that God uses to really transform who you are. And I remember I had gone to this conference and I was listening to this preacher, very anointed preacher. I think I was about 14 years old. And there was actually a couple in the church I was attending that paid to send me to that conference because they knew it would be a good investment into my life. And I, I'll never forget that it really was. And so I go and I attend this conference and I listen to this preacher ministering on surrendering to the Holy Spirit. 
And he began to talk about how surrendering to the Holy Spirit and finding true power is compared to an eagle. An eagle will fly above the storm, and at a certain point, it goes from flying, which is using its strength and movement, to soaring, which is where it just yields to the wind and allows the wind to take it where it needs to go. And that's really the secret to power when it comes to ministry, when it comes to the call of God. It's surrender. It's giving of yourself and saying, Lord, I'm not going to move on my own. I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm just going to yield. And it takes discipline. It takes resolve. It takes persistence to really grab hold of the Lord in that way. Because the truth is God has already grabbed hold of you. He's already taken hold of your life. And you need to now say, Lord, I'm not letting you go either. The scripture tells us that the Lord holds us in his love and that nothing can separate us from that grip of love, that that grip is so strong that there is no angel nor demon, there's no height nor depth, there's nothing that can separate us from that love. And I want you to really think about that because angelic beings are powerful, they're strong, they're mighty, they're of a different realm. And these are creatures that are very, very, very powerful. Yet they themselves can't even pry us from the grip of God's love. And so the issue is not God grabbing hold of you. The issue is you being able to say, Lord, I will not let you go. Father, I surrender. Father, I give myself to you. And that is where we find the power. So I'm going to look over this story in the scripture. And it's found in Luke chapter 5. And I'm talking about the first disciples that Jesus called. And I thought this was a great way to end the series because we can really see the power of surrender in their lives. And really, as I said at the top of the beginning of the program, the greatest enemy to your ministry, the greatest foe to the call of God on your life, the biggest opposition will come from your flesh. It will come from self. It will come from being so full of the world, so full of ambition, so full of pride, so full of fear and doubt that there is no room left for the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to go now and look at this portion of Scripture, and then we're going to go down the line as we've done with the other portions of Scripture and the other sermons in this series and pull truth from these stories. So let's go now to Luke chapter 5, and let's read verses 1 through 11. The Scripture says this, One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the Word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and were on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Now, I want to look at verse number two, and we're going to pull out our first truth. Verse number two tells us that Jesus noticed that there were two empty boats now, Jesus had been pressed by the crowd. The crowds would press on Jesus in such a way that he would often withdraw. He would try to find secluded places to pray. And Jesus was in a physical body, so he would grow tired every now and then, and he would need to break away from the crowd to rest. But he wanted to teach the people, and they were pressing on him. The crowds were surrounding him. The press of the crowd caused the Lord to look for somewhere from where he could teach, and he saw empty boats. Number one, the called must make room for the Lord. I love the way this scripture puts it. John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. 
When I first began to pursue the call of God on my life, I was 11 years old, and I didn't even go into the ministry until I was 13. It was two years of being consecrated and dedicated to prayer. That's where I found the power on my life. Now, that's not going to be the same for everyone. Some people will have to wait longer, and some people will have to wait shorter periods of times. But the truth is that everyone at some point must learn to empty themselves, and you'll have to empty yourself every single day. Just this morning when I was praying, this song came on. It was, I need thee every hour. And I don't know what it was. I had heard the song several times and I had sung, I, I, there were several times that I sang the song to the Lord. But this time around, it just really hit me. You ever have those truths just hit you again, but in a, in a deeper way and you have this greater appreciation for them from that moment on? And I don't know what it was about that moment, but I was in prayer, I was worshiping, and I just began to sing to the Lord, I need thee every hour. Every hour I need thee. And I just begin to break before the Lord and I realize I need Him every single hour, every single moment. If I get away from that, listen, I'm just like you. If I get away from being with the Lord, my flesh begins to rise. I begin to become fearful. I begin to become mean and dry and dull. But in that place, I found this fresh surrender again. And the Lord will lead you into greater and greater depths of surrender as you pursue Him. So. It was in prayer when I was 11 years old that I began to empty myself and say, Lord, I just want you to have room in my life. You must make room for the Lord, and prayer is how you do it. Prayer moves out the crowd and gives Jesus a place to speak. Prayer pushes back the press of life and gives Jesus a boat in which he can sit and proclaim the truth that you need to hear. Prayer is the place where we surrender. Prayer is the place where we empty ourselves and where we say, Lord, I don't want it to be me anymore. When people look at me, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see Jesus. I want them to see the face of the master when they look at my face. I want my presence and his presence to be indistinguishable from one another. You know that when you walk into a room, the atmosphere changes. When you enter a situation, the situation changes. Why? Because the presence of Jesus rests upon your life. And that's because you've made room for Him. So in your life, you must learn to make room for the Lord. There were empty boats from where Jesus could teach. And that led from one thing to another. And it ends up that Jesus calls those very same fishermen whose boats He used to the ministry, to follow Him, to be His disciples. And there was no greater honor that they had ever experienced in their lives. Now, let's go down to verse number 3 where the Scripture says, Stepping into one of the boats... Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Now you notice Simon did not resist their Lord's request. First there was room for Jesus. Jesus entered and then the Lord began to make a request. Now this is how the Lord will move in your life. First you will make room for him. He will notice, he will see. Because if you remember from the verse we just read before this one, that Jesus was the one who saw the empty boats. And so he took notice of the emptiness. I love that. Jesus took notice of the emptiness. And so he found a place where he could step. He found a place where he could teach. And after he found this place, after he entered into that emptiness, he began to make requests. This is what the Lord will do. This is how it works. You begin to surrender yourself in prayer. You begin to empty yourself in prayer. You begin to say, Lord, take over. Lord, I want to make room for you. Lord, I want to remove the crowd. I want to push back on that press, and I want to make room for you to speak. And you start making room. And once the Lord has room in your life, He'll use that place that you've created for Him to challenge you. And He'll speak to you, and He'll begin to ask you things. And He told Simon that He wanted to be pushed out into the water so that He could teach from there. And Simon didn't hesitate. He did what the Lord asked him to do. So number two, the called must be willing to serve. Now, I touched on a point that was like unto this. I believe it was when I taught on Moses and I talked about how he was not lazy. The called must not be lazy. This is similar to that point, but even productive, busy people can sometimes have trouble serving. I'm talking about humble service in the ministry to the Lord. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11 says, the greatest among you must be a servant. You know where I began in the ministry? I began in the ministry in the sound room. That's right. I went to the sound room 
And all I did was push a button and that button would change the words that the people would sing during worship. And that's what I did. In fact, I started even before we were using computers and I used what was called an overhead projector. And these were projectors that, I don't know if, you, if you've ever seen them. Some of you maybe have not. I, I'm a millennial. So some millennials have seen them. Some millennials have not. Most millennials who are in church have seen them. And so uh, the, the overhead projector is basically this big clunky box with a light inside. And on top of the box is a glass. And so that light shines above. You put a, a uh, transparent sheet of paper. It's like a plastic material paper. And that has the words on it. That light shoots it up into a magnification uh, system and that pushes it on the wall. So it's an overhead projector. And, and, and this was just, it was old technology, but I'll tell you this, as clunky as that thing was, I kept it clean. And I had all of the songs, all of the sheet music alphabetized. In fact, I would show up to the worship practices just so that I can find the best places to flip the songs that would yield the greatest result for people singing the songs. Because there was nothing more annoying, at least in my opinion, at that time, than when a song flipper would put on the next verse too soon or be too late in flipping the song, because then people would just be thrown off. But the point is, as, as small of a job as that was, I took it seriously, and I served the Lord with it. You know, many of us miss big opportunities because we won't take the small ones. The Lord looks for those who are willing to serve. The Lord looks for those who are willing to take a humble position. If all you want ministry for is to make yourself important, if all you want ministry for is to make yourself feel special and gifted and celebrated, then go do something in the world. Don't do ministry. That's not for you. But if you want to serve, if you want to make a difference for the kingdom of God, if you want to say, Lord, I want to bring you glory, then the ministry is for you. That's where I started. Overhead projector. I would flip the songs. And every time during worship, every time I would do that job, I'm telling you, I would give it my all. I would flip that song. I would turn those sheet musics over. And, and I'm telling you, it was all perfectly timed. All the wires were perfectly wrapped. Everything was in order. I gave my all to that ministry. And because I was willing to serve, it was actually my ministry in the sound room that opened the door for me to preach my first sermon. I was 13 years old when I asked my youth pastor about a visitation I had received from the Lord. The Lord had been visiting me when I was 13 years old. And the Lord would speak to me at night and I felt this press in my heart. And I can identify with the prophet when he said that it was like fire shut up in my bones. I literally would sweat at night with this great press on my life. With this, I felt the hand of the Lord very heavily placed upon me. And I felt this deep and urgent sense that it was necessary for me to preach the gospel. I felt it so, I felt it into the very core of who I am. My entire being felt that call. I felt myself being pulled by the hand of God into ministry. And I would stay up late into the night having, I would have trouble sleeping because the Lord would speak to me about souls and the Lord would speak to me about people who are perishing. And the Lord would speak to me about a gospel that needed to be preached. I would read the scriptures that would tell you that if, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. I talked about the importance of preaching the gospel several times on this broadcast, but if you've ever got that sense from me, it's because it comes from the Lord. The Lord has placed that burden in my heart. The Lord has placed that press upon me. And so I went to my youth pastor and I said, the Lord is visiting me in this way. And I said, what do I do? And he said, well, and by the way, this was on a Wednesday night. He said, okay, you can preach next Thursday. And so it was a week away that I was to preach my first sermon. And when I asked him later why he was so willing to let me just preach my first sermon, he told me that it was because he saw me serving in the little and without hesitation, he opened the door or God used him to open the door for me to preach my first sermon. And I could literally trace everything to this day back to that first sermon because from there it did not stop. It snowballed into what it is today. It was one thing after another. It was nonstop after that first sermon. After I preached that first sermon, it was nonstop. It all happened from there. 
And it was all the Lord's doing. Maybe I'll tell the story sometime, but it was all the Lord's doing. But God took notice because I was serving. So number two, the called must be willing to serve. Number three, we're going to get from verses four through seven. Let's read them again. The scriptures here say, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, We worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. <laughs> That's just incredible that there was such an abundance of fish that their boats were on the verge of sinking and their nets were tearing. But here we find, number three, that the called must do the counterintuitive. Now, what does this mean? This means that we're called of God and we must at some point do what is counterintuitive or against our reasoning or something that we don't quite understand. We must do the counterintuitive. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Think about that. There are things that we do and there are things that we don't do because of our human reasoning. But the Lord will come into a situation and He will require you to do something that doesn't make any sense at all. I'll give you an example. I remember when I wanted to first go into television ministry, the Lord had me give away my, one of my first cameras to another ministry. And I thought, Lord, it doesn't make any sense that you would tell me to give away a camera. By the way, it was very expensive for me at the time. It was a $2,500 camera. That was, one of our, that was our second camera. And we took it everywhere. Gabriel, our camera guy, he was with me. We took it to Japan and Mexico and all over the world. And I would preach with that thing and I would do videos with that. And that was, that was at the time, that was pretty much where we did all our ministry was on that camera. And for a televangelist to give away his cameras is like asking a pastor to give away his church building. So in my mind, it just didn't make any sense. I was like, Lord, why would you tell me to give this camera away when you call me to use it? And the Lord said, just do it. I said, okay, Lord. And after making sure it was the Lord, I went and I gave that camera away. And it didn't make any sense, but I can look back to this day and see that that was a seed that was planted. And later, it grew into more camera equipment. Now, you know how I feel about the prosperity gospel. I don't think that material things should ever become the focus of the ministry. But there is a spiritual principle that is true, and you can see it in Scripture, that you reap what you sow. You want to reap prayer, or if you want to uh, re reap prayer, you have to sow prayer. If you want to reap finances, you have to sow finances. If you want to reap anything at all, you have to sow that very thing or the seeds for that. So my camera, that one camera was the seed that would later grow into a production studio. I didn't see it at the time. It didn't make any sense to me. But that counterintuitive act is what God used to test me and to bless me. And often he'll, he can do both with just one act. Um, as we go over to the, the next point, I want to just quickly mention what I saw in verse 8. And those of you who've been following the series will at least appreciate this point. Um, verse 8 says, When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. Now, what's interesting here is we saw this with Isaiah and with Moses. Remember, when they came into the presence of God, they looked at themselves and they felt, they felt unworthy. And we dealt with that in the, the past couple of lessons. But I just thought it was interesting to point out there that many people who come into contact with God when they're being called get this sense of unworthiness. So it's important to note because you're not alone in that. Now, verse 11 tells us, And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Number four, and my final point for this series, and then I want you to go and do something with this truth. Here it is. The called must leave everything to follow Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. Number one, the called must make room for the Lord. Number two, the called must be willing to serve. Number three, the called must do the counterintuitive. And number four, 
The called must leave everything to follow Jesus. All of these things, if you'll do them, they diminish the flesh. They weaken the flesh. The flesh, self, that is the greatest enemy to your ministry. The flesh is where doubt is. The flesh is where fear is. The flesh is where ego and pride and ambition are. This is why God wants to rid you of the flesh. But I want to, I want to really emphasize this final point here because it's so important and we're closing our series with it. The called must leave everything to follow Jesus. You know, people ask me, if God didn't call you into ministry, what would you be doing? And it's an interesting question because I often wonder that. And the truth is, I'll never know. There were ambitions I had before ministry. Ministry was not always what I wanted to do. And you say, you were so young when you started. Well, the truth is that those ambitions stayed with me and in fact, in some degree, are still with me to this day. And by ambitions, I don't mean, you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about goals, talking about things I wanted to do. I'm not talking about the drive to promote self. I'm talking about things that I wanted to do. There are things I wanted to do that I will never do. They weren't sinful things. They weren't necessarily evil things. They weren't wrong. You wouldn't have judged me for them if you didn't know I was a preacher. But I, I would have been in business or I would have started something else. And I have had times where I said, Lord, I wonder what it would be like if I could have done those things. And the Lord reminds me, that's what you sacrificed. That's what you gave up. You know, I wanted to be doing video production. I wanted to possibly write uh, different novels. and there were, there were so many things I wanted to do. And the Lord called me from all of them. And I'll tell you this right now. I don't regret following Jesus. I don't regret leaving my nets behind. I don't regret giving those things up for the sake of the gospel. What I do now is for the Lord and it counts for eternity and it reaches souls. Now, are there times where I wonder? Yes, that yearning is no longer there. I have some curiosity some, from time to time, of course. That's what, what could have been if I pursued this career path or that career path? But the truth is those ambitions had to die. I had to say no to everything I wanted to do. Catherine Coleman put it best when she was ministering to a crowd, and you could possibly find the video. And I recommend, look up Catherine Coleman. Look at some of her powerful teachings. She said, do you want to know what it really costs? Do you want to know what it really costs? She said, I'll tell you. It will cost you everything. Listen, it won't cost you some things. It will cost you everything. Everything gets put on the altar when God calls you. Don't take lightly the call of God. But I can stand here as a testimony and tell you, all sincerity from the bottom of my heart, it's worth it. It's worth everything you could give just to sense that the Lord is pleased with your life. Worth it all. And that concludes our series, God's Anointed. I want to pray with you now and let's, let's just give it all to the Lord. Come on, this is your time. This is your moment. It's time. No more running. No more excuses. No more praying about it. No more asking questions. No more disqualifying yourself. No more wondering where to start. No more wondering if you'll last. No more weighing it. Right here, right now. It's all or nothing. Don't say no to the Holy Spirit. Don't say no to what God is asking you to do. Lord Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this now. And I ask, Father, 
for the strength to do your will. Holy Spirit, empower us as only you can to do what Jesus did. Empower us to live like Jesus lived. Give us the grace and the anointing to preach this gospel, to see the captives go free. Remind us to never look back, Lord. Remind us not to seek our own. Precious Holy Spirit, we need you every hour. We need you every moment of every day. Keep us on track. Pull us into the destiny that God has planned. Draw us into selflessness. Help us to mortify the deeds of the flesh in Jesus' name. We break off every restraint and we leave behind every excuse, Lord. I want you to say this. Say, here I am, Lord. Send me. I want you to say it if you believe it. Say, amen. I sense the anointing and I, I want to hear from you. What has God called you to do? Tell me in the comments. I want to hear from you. I'm going to read your comments now um, from last week's uh, message. Oh, first, I got to welcome the new members of Spirit Church. We love you. We are praying for you. And I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to know how you can join the Spirit family, use the information at the bottom of the screen and join the Spirit Church today. And you'll get a weekly email from us with that teaching. You can actually join our emailing list. Um, if you're already getting emails from us, you can actually update your preferences at the bottom of the email to where you can get even more. I send out a podcast every week. I send out a video like this every week. I send out a blog every week. I send out special updates. So make sure you're getting those. Make sure you're on our emailing list. And I'm going to read these comments now and stick around to the end. I actually have an update that's different than last week. My team and I went, as of today, from where we're recording it, this, just this past Tuesday, we went to look at facilities. And I'm going to give you an update on that in just a moment. But first, here are the comments from last week's teaching. And these are from God's anointed Noah the Patriarch. Menla Senti writes, Hello, Brother David. I'm so blessed to have come across your channel. Wish I would have known about it earlier. I'm so blessed each time I hear you preaching. May God continue to bless you to extend his kingdom. Amen. And God bless you too, and may he use you to do the same as well. Stefan Raj writes, You are the best, brother. I love watching your videos very much. I learn a lot about so many things. Thank you, Brother Stephen. The worship session was awesome. God bless you guys. And we know that we love the worship ministry of Stephen Moctezuma. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check out his worship playlist here on Encounter TV. And also don't forget to give him a follow on Facebook. He puts out a new video every single week. The next commenter writes, Bless you, Pastor. You are a blessing to me. This message speaks directly to my life. God bless. And I want you guys to know you're a blessing to me as well. And just to know that this content is blessing your life and helping you get closer to the Lord. That's why we do what we do. Joel Rodriguez writes, Amazing teaching. You are such an inspiration to me. May God continue blessing you. And finally, Phila Dodd writes, I'm grateful for this series. I've been thinking about the call of God, and I know that God is moving my heart to take steps of faith. The more I hear from this series, the more convicted I feel to simply believe and make some moves. Thank you for the encouragement and continue to call out warriors of God. And we will continue to call out warriors of God. And in fact, we want to do it on larger scales. This is where we need your help. Now, my team and I went to go look at buildings. And those of you who have been keeping up with our campaign, you should be excited to know that we have an update. Here's where we are in the campaign. So since we're nearing the end of this campaign, and I think we can wrap it up. I think we can get this wrapped up, guys, in the next three months. And then that begins the next phase of the campaign. Because remember, there are the monthly costs, which where we have to pay the, the rent, we have to pay the utilities and everything else that comes up. There's power. There's Imagine what it costs to run an AC with a studio that can seat, you know, possibly 50 to 100 people. It's going to be, it's going to be, Big on the monthly expenses, which we, which is why we, we're doing this campaign. Um, and then we're going to move into the next phase where we raise the renovation costs and all that. And I'll, I'll keep you posted on all that. But we're going to keep you posted all the way through. Those of you who are partnered with us, 
Keep partnering. Do not cancel your partnership. Let me tell you something. When you hit hard times, the last thing that should go is your support of the gospel. That should be the last thing. Cut the cable before you cut your giving to the gospel. Cut, every, cut out Starbucks and coffee before you cut your giving to the gospel. I'm telling you, the gospel needs to be priority number one. It is for me, and I'm challenging you to make it number one for you. So, so continue to partner with us. I thank you for your support. We're closing in on that number. I remember, we're going to do two things with this new income or this new monthly level of income that the ministry is taking in. We're going to be able to run that facility and we're going to do more events more often and in more places. Now, why do we do this? Our number one reason, remember, is souls. There is no greater cause than souls in the earth. The greatest cause you could join is the cause to save souls and point them to Jesus. That's the greatest cause you could be a part of. Now, the events, we're already starting to plan those and do those, so thank you. The facility, I want to tell you all about it. We want, we want to have a 24-7 prayer room in that facility, a prayer center there. We want to have studio audience occupancy to where we can, you can come in and be a part of it. And let me tell you something, we're going to use that thing to the max. When we get a studio audience accommodation going, this means that we can do guest interviews, bring in a studio audience. We can do special impartation services, bring in a studio audience. Tape Encounter TV, bring in a studio audience. Weekly meetings, bring in a studio audience. And so we're really going to make use of that, and I can't wait for you to be a part of that. On top of that, the facility is going to house what will be the center, the hub, for this new television network that I've been telling you about. The Encounter TV network is an online network that takes advantage of the new media, and such as Smart TV, Apple TV, Roku, all of those things. So anyway, to bring it to a close here, let me bring it all together. We want to win more souls by taking the ministry to the next level. And we want to take the ministry to the next level by raising our monthly support. That monthly support will cover the monthly cost for a facility and allow us to do more events more often and in more places. That facility will allow us to put out more media, ultimately resulting in more souls. So I try to make it as clear and concise as possible. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and type questions you may have about that campaign right here on the YouTube channel. And I will go ahead and do my best to answer those. If I some, Sometimes I don't always understand the questions exactly. But again, and then we're gonna enter into the second phase of the campaign. Now, I wanna encourage you with the scripture. And it's found in Luke chapter six and verse number 38. Don't tune me out just yet, I'm almost done. Luke chapter six, verse 38. This is what the scripture says. And this is Jesus talking. He says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Now, I don't want to get into saying that if you sow $77, you're going to reap $770. You know me, guys. I don't like the gimmicks or things like that. And I don't necessarily think it's biblical. So, I'm just going to tell it to you straight. Jesus said that if you give, you receive. Now, how he wants to bless you, that's between you and him. But I will tell you this. I want to challenge you to give. Some of you can become a partner with our ministry right now and you haven't done it. Become a partner for $30 a month. Help us finish up this first phase of the campaign, which is the monthly cost. So we can go look for a facility. And once we find the facility, we'll let you know what it'll cost to renovate it. and We'll move right in and it will... Like I said, we'll keep you updated every step of the way, and it's going to be exciting. I'm telling you, it's going to be exciting. I want to build a world evangelism center where we can reach the whole world in greater scales. But I need your help. Sign up today to become a $30 a month partner. Give to the ministry. And if you don't want to become a $30 a month partner, that's fine. Give a one-time gift. Tell us it's for the building. Some of you can sow a 1000 Some of you business people watching. There are people watching. I know this for a fact because I know our demographics. There are people watching who even $100,000 is nothing for you. You could do it like that. Now, I know that's not everybody, but believe it or not, we have people watching who are like that. And you spend $100,000 on other things. I know that because, like I said, I know our demographics. But I want to challenge you to so big for the kingdom. Partner with our ministry. Become a $30 a month partner, and I will send you either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths about Demons and Spiritual Warfare. It'll be signed. So sign up to become a partner or give a one-time gift. And I really want to challenge those of you who can do big gifts. Just release it. Release it to the ministry. Let's win souls together. And I believe the Lord will bless our work. 
So if you want to give or partner, wait until the very end of this video. A link's going to appear if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're not watching this on YouTube, use the information at the bottom of the screen to go and partner today. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.